Hey friends, I'm Michael Kingswood. It's story time. And look what I've got. Hey, look. This is volume two from 52 Stories in 2023, as you can read when you look at it. Uh, yeah, the proof copy for second volume of my 52 Stories project for the year uh, arrived in the mail this week. And it looks pretty good. There's a couple minor corrections I needed to make to it, but uh, it's already been done. And it is being shipped off to the people who backed the Kickstarter campaign for Volume 2. And, uh, yeah, so that's good. Uh, the fulfillment of that is in progress and going well. And just in time, too, because the Kickstarter for Volume 3 starts this coming Tuesday the 1st of August at noon Pacific time. And you can go to follow that campaign. Now the page is live. Michaelkingswood.com slash 52 in 23 V three. We'll get you over to the Kickstarter page. You can follow the campaign for a notification as soon as it, as soon as it goes live. So then you can back it, back it and give me money and you can get all kinds of good stories and have fun and everybody will be happy. It'll be great. I of course will be doing some live streaming next week when the thing goes live fittingly and uh periodically give daily updates for the uh, campaign as i am able to with other things going on uh which is what i've done in previous campaigns so that'll be it uh so it's gonna be a fun time so make sure you go and check out the campaign page follow it now and tell all your friends and then once the campaign starts back it back it quickly uh because faster funding equals less stress for me and also more uh reasons for kickstarter to give it additional um attention because they like it because it's doing well right but you're like hey kingswood it's saturday why are you talking about a kickstarter campaign on next tuesday well because it's coming up but also i agree it is saturday it is time for story saturday so let us continue what we were doing the last time we met which was we were do I have a copy of the... I think I have a... Uh, I'll find it later. Uh, we are going through the, the heroic fantasy novella that I wrote a couple, a few years back, several years back now, called The Necromancer's Lair. Last time we met, we went through the first uh, segment of it. We're proceeding on with the story now. I wrote it. I'm reading it. You will like it. See you on the flip side. It was difficult to tell how much time passed with no external reference, but regardless, they remained stuck in that small cell for far too long. At first, Gareth plotted ways to escape. They could team up to bend a bar out of shape, and then Hatherley, the thinner of the two, could slip out and figure out how to free Gareth. Hatherley could stand on Gareth's shoulders and work the stone where it encased the bars with Gareth's dagger. Given enough time and effort, he would surely be able to remove enough stone that Gareth could knock a couple bars out. In truth, Gareth was surprised that Hatherley went along with those ideas, oaths or no. Regardless, it did not work. Nothing worked. And so they sat idly, letting time pass by as they steadily grew more thirsty and hungry, and as fatigue began to set in. Those sensations and the urgings of nature were the only way to measure time's passage, it must surely have been a day, maybe more, before their captor revealed himself. All at once, the seemingly unbroken wall of the chamber housing their cell became broken. A portion of the wall swung open like a door, except before it swung open there was no indication of hinges or any break in the stone at all. In fact, the door bisected several of the stones that made up the walls of the chamber. A rush of air accompanied the door's opening, bringing with it a sickly sweet odor that Gareth could not quite place. It was familiar, but off, somehow. His contemplation of the odor was short-lived, though, his attention being taken by the man who stepped delicately into the chamber. Delicate summed the man up perfectly. Hatherley was slender. This fellow made him look like a hulking slab of muscle. Gareth was not entirely certain how he managed to support his own weight, let alone the weight of the black robes he wore. They were cowled, the robes, though he wore the hood thrown back, and were cinched around his waist by a length of red-brown cloth of some sort. The man's features were sharp, almost skeletal, which was fitting in a way, but far from weak. His dark eyes peered at Gareth and Hatherley intensely, 
from beneath the narrow black brows that matched the short-cut black hair atop his head. The necromancer, Gareth presumed, of course the shambling figures of two reanimated dead men that accompanied him on either side as he strode into the room, would have given that away even if he did not look the part. "'Welcome, friends,' said the necromancer. His voice was surprising, deep and strong, belonging to a much more substantial man. And cultured. Gareth had encountered lords who spoke with less precision and elegance than this man. No simple, power-hungry lunatic, this one. "'Glad to be here,' Gareth replied, trying to keep his tone steady, despite the shiver crawling up his spine. The necromancer smirked slightly. "'I've no doubt.' He stopped his approach about ten feet from the cell. The walking corpses halted, as well as he crossed his arms over his chest. "'You are the first to stumble upon my back door,' he said. The others all tried a more direct route. He made a vague gesture toward the corpse on the left. Gareth followed the gesture with his gaze and found his bowels turning to liquid. He knew that man. Hard to call him that now, but Ranulf had been powerful, jolly, and loyal once. To see him standing there, barely recognizable from the decay of his flesh, even as the necromancer's ghastly art kept him from his rest, nearly unmanned Gareth. He had not known that Ranulf had sought to challenge the necromancer. He had simply stopped coming to the pub one day. Gareth assumed he had just moved on or found a different watering hole. Though why he would not have at least said goodbye to those who became friendly with him stung a bit. Apparently, Gareth had been wrong, and that error filled him with fear. If such a mighty man as Ranulf could not defeat the necromancer, what chance did he have, especially considering the circumstances? He kept his mouth shut. Better to let the necromancer speak. Perhaps he would give something away. What did you hope to accomplish? The necromancer's tone was conversational, though tainted with a hint of derision. Gareth shrugged and spread his hands. Do you really need to ask? Amusement flashed through the necromancer's eyes, and he shook his head. No, I suppose not. I am, after all, the great menace, the threat to all humanity. He took on an ironic, almost mocking tone as he emphasized those last words. There was a moment of silence as the necromancer just looked at Gareth. Then he sighed and shook his head. Does it never occur to any of you that I might have a good reason for my studies? He did not wait for Gareth's response. He just turned away and strode back through the doorway. A pity, he said, and he made a circular gesture with his right hand. Then he was gone, but the animated corpses remained. Gareth blinked. Um, okay... A sharp crack from overhead drew Gareth's gaze to the ceiling, and he leapt backwards, pushing himself off the ground with a powerful spring of his legs. He did not go far before slamming into the bars behind him with a loud clang of steel striking steel. Had he not been wearing his breastplate, the impact would have hurt. A lot. But the ceiling stone coming dislodged and falling down right where he was standing would have hurt a lot more. Hatherly, too, dove to the side. He hit the ground and rolled to his feet to Gareth's left, his eyes wide. My lord, he began, yes, I know, we're in trouble, I'm working on it. Hatherley shook his head vigorously, his eyes locked on the ceiling, where the block used to be. No, my lord, look! Gareth looked back up, and his heart sank. Hands were reaching through the hole left by the block that had just fallen. Rotting, dead hands, with the flesh hanging in strips from them like so many torn rags. They scrabbled around blindly for all Gareth could tell, until they reached the next block over, and they began tugging on it. The block, slightly larger than the one that had just fallen, had to have weighed a quarter of a ton. There was no way those dead limbs could move such a piece of stone, and yet they did. Slowly at first, then more quickly with each passing second, the stone began to rock. Dirt and dust fell away from its edges, a trickle at first, then a steady stream as the block came inexorably free. Gareth shuffled to the side to avoid being crushed as the second block came down, Hatherly following suit. This was not good, not good at all. If the falling blocks did not do them in, Gareth did not want to think about how easily such strong arms could tear he and Hatherly limb from limb if the creatures opted to come down and join them, and his axe lay out of reach at Ranulf's corpse's feet. Gareth took a second to wonder why Ranulf and the other corpse had stayed behind, if the intention was to crush or bludgeon he and Hatherly to death. Then he had to leap forward to avoid yet another block. By then, the ceiling was more a dark, gaping hole than anything else. Dark as it was, though, he could see the walking corpses shambling around toward their next project. Hear their unnatural silence, 
the lack of breath and speech beneath the sounds of their movement, smell the stink of their advanced state of decay, a stink so strong he could almost taste it. Adrenaline prevented bile from rising in his throat despite the surge of revulsion he felt. Time enough for that sort of thing later. Now was for figuring out how to survive. The hands appeared again, tugging at yet another block, but this one was next to the first block that fell. Gareth dropped his shield to the ground, hopped up onto the fallen block, and reached up. With the added height from his perch, a pair of rotting wrists were easy to reach. He grabbed and pulled, twisting his torso to add more force to the movement. For a heartbeat, there was resistance. Then the moving corpse came free and fell, and he spun completely around to hurl it across the cell, toward Hatherley. Hatherley, he roared as he threw. The corpse landed at the serving man's feet and moved quickly to right itself, but not quickly enough. Hatherley's sword took its head off in one smooth cut. The corpse collapsed in a heap. Hatherley glanced at Gareth, his expression for once openly impressed. Well played, my lord, he said simply. Gareth grinned in reply, then reached up for the next set of hands. The five corpses in the ceiling managed to drop two more blocks before Gareth and Hatherley killed them all. Again. They never even tried to change their tactic, but simply kept on tugging and digging as Gareth pulled them down one by one. Hatherley proved efficient at dispatching them, though the last two required Gareth's intervention as well, as much due to their limited room to maneuver with all the fallen stone as anything else. But finally, the last of the corpses lay at Gareth and Hatherley's feet. Gareth drew in a deep breath and wiped sweat from his brow, then he stepped over to Hatherley and clapped him on the shoulder. Well done, Hatherley, we may just make it out of this yet. No sooner had the words left his mouth, when a metallic clang, followed by the groan of metal being stressed beyond its capacity, caused Gareth to turn around. Ranulf and the other reanimated corpse the necromancer had left behind, a man who in life had been even larger and stronger than Ranulf from the look of him, stood right up next to the bars of the cell. Between them, they held an exceptionally stout iron rod, which they had thrust between the two of the bars, making up the cell's walls. The two corpses pulled on the rod, hard. The bars of the cell groaned in protest again and slowly bent outward. Oh no, Gareth breathed. The necromancer's reason for leaving them was plain. They were his backup plan in case the ceiling corpses failed. He felt his eyes growing wide as his grin of triumph, which he wore so briefly, faded. His mouth suddenly dry, he glanced away from the two powerful corpses toward where his axe lay, so close and yet so far. If only he could get to it, they might have a chance. My lord, Hatherley began, as though he intended to say more, but when Gareth looked at him, the serving man was pale, his eyes wide as well. He stared at the massive corpses as they worked at the cell bars, and it was plain that for once he was not referring to Gareth when he said Lord, but instead to his personal deity. Gareth couldn't blame him for that. A few choice prayers came to mind, the ones he had recalled back on the ledge and more. He quickly shoved them away. If they were going to get through this, he needed his wits, not meaningless words spoken to a being that might not even exist. The bars were bending more quickly now, their groans of protest becoming more pronounced. Dust puffed down from the ceiling, where the bars were driven in. Very soon, either the bars themselves or the mortar holding them in place, if any, would give way, leaving a space that the corpses could squeeze into. Or a space that Gareth could exit. It was a long shot, but there was no choice. He bent over and picked up his shield, then strapped it back onto his left forearm. Get ready, he said, glancing at Hatherley over his shoulder. When those bars go, we charge. Hatherley looked at him as though he was daft. He might have a point there. Are you with me, Hatherley? The slender man hesitated, then, licking his lips nervously, nodded. It only took another minute or so, then, with a final scream, first one bar, then the other, reached the end of its endurance and snapped. The top half of each clattered to the ground, falling free from their ceiling holes. The lower halves remained fixed in the folds in the floor, but bent over as they were, it would only be a small challenge to vault past them. The corpses released their great pry bar, and it too clattered to the floor. Ranulf stepped forward, his hands lifting, revealing fingers that had decayed enough that the tips were better called bony claws than anything else. The unearthly glow in his eyes dimmed as his eyelids, somehow still intact despite the decay of the rest of his body, narrowed. Gareth had seen that expression on the powerful man before in life. 
he was readying himself for a fight. A new chill of terror swept over Gareth. How much of a man's personality, his experience, his self remained when he became undead? Did Ranulf know what had happened to him? If he did, the man Gareth had known would have viewed this sort of existence with revulsion. Horror. Did he reside even now within his own skull, screaming for release, yet powerless to bring it about or resist the commands of the necromancer? Not me, Gareth said between bared teeth. I'll not go like that. Ranulf stepped forward into the gap between the broken bars. Gareth drew a deep breath and forced his fear down with the fiercest battle roar he could muster. Then he raised his shield in front of himself and charged. Behind him, he thought he heard Hatherley take up his own roar as he followed. Then there was only the stink of Ranulf's corpse. As Gareth lowered his head and raised his shield a bit further, he struck Ranulf in the midriff. The impact was more than he had expected, and he almost lost his feet. For a moment, he got a sinking feeling in his belly as he thought sure the large corpse would resist the attack. Then, abruptly, Ranulf fell backwards, and Gareth found himself following. It would not do to get into a wrestling match, so Gareth tucked his shoulder as he struck the floor next to the fallen corpse. He rolled with the momentum of his fall, trying to put distance between himself and his foe. He almost succeeded. Gareth rolled to his feet and turned, looking for his axe. It should be right here. Then something grabbed his ankle and pulled. Hard. He lost his balance and fell to the ground before he could even begin to resist the pull. Unprepared as he was, he struck the ground hard and once again found himself struggling to draw breath as the air left his lungs. The noise of his armor striking the stone rang in his ears, stunning him almost as much as the loss of his breath. For a moment, he lost track of himself, disoriented. Then a stabbing pain shot up his leg, and only the fact that he had lost his breath prevented him from screaming out. Then he was moving backwards, the grip on his ankle drawing him inexorably away. He looked back and saw that Ranulf's corpse had got a hold of his right ankle with its right hand, and had dug the claws of his left hand into the meat of the same calf. The corpse wore an expression of insatiable hunger, but almost beneath that... Satisfaction? Glee? Then it pulled with both hands, and any ability to analyze fled Gareth's mind before a single, deeper agony as the claws dug deep furrows in his leg. Somehow he was screaming. When had he regained his breath? It did not matter. He was caught. He was going to die and become... No! Gareth kicked with his left foot, hard as he could. The sole of his boot impacted the side of Ranulf's head with a snap of breaking bone combined with a sickening squish. The corpse's head canted to the side, knocked off true by the force of Gareth's kick. The tugging on his leg ceased, and the pain diminished slightly as the claws burrowing stopped. Gareth pushed himself away from the corpse and his wounded leg slid out of its grasp. Madly, hope surged within him. Had he actually won? Then the corpse twitched. Again. It moved its hands to its head and, with a quick jerk, set it back aright. Then its gaze leveled on Gareth, and its eyes narrowed. He could have sworn he saw fury in that expression. It pushed itself up onto its hands and knees, then to its feet. Bugger me, Gareth said aloud. No, he actually shouted it, he realized, as soon as the words left his mouth. There was no way he could walk, not with his leg wounded as it was. Desperately, he pushed himself away from Ranulf's corpse, scrabbling against the floor tiles with his hands and his left foot. Hatherley, where was Hatherley? Grunting and a curse drew Gareth's eyes to the left, and his heart sank. Hatherley was firmly set upon by the other burly corpse. The nimble manservant ducked beneath a raking claw attack, but he bled from a cut to his left shoulder and right thigh. He countered then, his longsword whipping toward the corpse's throat, but the thing dodged backwards with the agility of a living man. It took a cut to the front of its neck, but it seemed not to even notice as it renewed its attack. They were in trouble. And then Gareth ran out of time to think. Ranulf's corpse bounded forward and swept its clawed hand down toward him. In desperation, he rolled to the right, bringing his shield up above his body. The corpse's hand struck the shield hard, harder than any living man could have struck it. Gareth's shoulder flared with pain, and he found himself driven into the ground, stunned. Above him, he heard Ranulf draw back for another attack. Gareth gritted his teeth and pushed himself off the floor with his right hand. He rolled onto his back in time to see the claws swiping down on him. 
Somehow, despite the pain in his shoulder, Gareth forced his shield arm up, and again the claws slammed into his shield, and again his arm buckled. Ranulf pulled his arm back again. Gareth could not take another hit like that. He could barely move his shield arm at all now. He pushed away his left heel, digging into the crack between two floor stones. But he did not go far enough. He reached out with his right hand to grab onto something, anything, to pull himself away faster. His hand came down on a rounded, grainy piece of wood. He blinked and moved his hand up the wood. It was wrapped in leather an inch or so from its end. He knew the feel of the leather like his own flesh. His axe. Ranulph's corpse swung at him again. Gareth grabbed the axe and swung it upward with a roar. Axe met rotting hand in mid-air, and the axe won. The shock of impact was less than Gareth would have expected. Maybe the decay was more pronounced than it appeared. As a result, his follow-through went farther than he had intended. Had Ranulph pressed the attack, he could have taken Gareth with ease. Instead, the corpse recoiled an expression that looked like pain or fear. Gareth should be so lucky, flashing across its face. Ranulph's hand, severed from its arm, landed a few feet away with a dry thud, and began crawling towards Gareth, dragging itself toward him inch by slow inch. Gareth swallowed hard and kicked himself away from hand and walking corpse alike, fear and revulsion lending his muscles extra strength. He only made it a couple feet before his back hit the wall of the room. And then he was out of time. The respite ended as Renolf's corpse charged back in, reaching for Gareth with this good hand, noping its mouth in a snarl, soundless except for the creaking and popping of joints that had long since lost their natural lubrication. Seated with his back to the wall was not a good fighting position, but that was what Gareth had. He was not going to end up this thing's lunch, or worse, the necromancer's new pet. He shouted something unintelligible, or at least he had no idea what it was, and shoved himself forward and to the left. He came down hard on his already injured shoulder, and a new surge of pain lanced out. His vision blurred and he saw spots. It was so tempting to just let go and collapse. For half a heartbeat, he almost gave in. Then he felt the breeze of Ranulph's claws passing through the air where his head was a moment before, and he forced himself to his senses. Gareth looked up to see Ranulph's corpse bent forward next to him, the follow-through from its mist causing it to overbalance slightly, placing all of its weight onto its right knee, the one that just happened to lie within swinging radius of his axe. The impact was more substantial when his axe bit into the side of the corpse's knee, but the satisfaction Gareth felt as his blow struck home was even greater. A gravelly crunch advertised the breaking of bones that had been made brittle through desiccation, and the knee gave way, sending Ranulph's corpse sprawling headlong into the wall. Gareth nearly lost his grip on the axe as the walking corpse fell. The blade caught on something, a piece of bone, he thought, for a moment. Panic over being disarmed in such a situation overwhelmed his satisfaction in an eternal instant. Then the bone gave way, and the axe pulled free in a small shower of bone fragments and scraps of flesh. Ranulph's corpse still had its leg, but his knee was ruined, cleaved at least halfway through the bones and connecting tissue with a large chunk missing where the axe pulled free. They would never again bear Ranulph's weight. The animated corpse thrashed around when it struck the wall. It tried to lift itself off the floor, but fell again when the stump of its right arm did not perform the way a hand would have. It hesitated, and Gareth imagined he saw something resembling thought in its glowing eyes, then it placed its good hand on the floor and pulled its legs beneath its body. The walking corpse pushed itself up onto its feet. Gareth's jaw dropped open, and he felt his eyes growing wide as his bowels turned to water with fear. No, it could not do that. But it had. It had righted itself and turned its head to regard Gareth coldly, without feeling or thought. Except, perhaps, was that grudging respect in its unearthly gaze? Gareth scrambled backwards, but the blood from his wounded leg made the stones of the floor slick and he got no traction. His terror increased. He was going to die. Die and become a slave in undeath. The corpse opened its jaw in a macabre imitation of a smile and it stepped toward Gareth. The knee gave way completely. Gareth reacted out of pure instinct. He rolled onto his right side, putting his shield between himself and Ranulph's corpse as it fell atop him. 
The weight of the impact was substantial, but less than he would have expected had Ranulf been alive. Still, he found himself driven onto his back, his shield arm splayed out uselessly to his side. Ranulf clawed at him. Gareth grit his teeth in anticipation of further agony, and was surprised when it did not come. Instead, the corpse's claws simply scraped harmlessly down the front of his breastplate with a sickening, high-pitched squeak. The thing must truly have been without thought. How else could it have made such a mistake? Beside himself with a mixture of relief and incredulity, Gareth remained still while the claws completed their transit of his armor. The horrid blue lights in Ranulf's eyes flared with chagrin or confusion or... Gareth did not stop to consider what exactly was or was not going through the thing's head. Silently blessing the fates that led it to blunder at that exact moment, he raised his axe, even as the corpse drew back its own hand for another attack, then plunged it down toward Ranulf's head. The sound Gareth's axe made as it clove through the side of his old drinking companion's head was solid, final, sickening. In spite of himself, he felt a tinge of regret, guilt almost, as the gruesome light in the corpse's eyes flickered and went out. Okay, so what I was looking for earlier was I uh, made me cool, have a cool little paperback copy of this particular story. I've, the cool little chapbook format. Uh, is it four and point seven four inches by seven and a quarter inch? I think it was no four and a quarter inch by seven. Uh, the cool little cool little size that uh, uh, I did a number of you know for various short stories. Anyway, I had this uh, Necromancer's Layers in paperback, and I couldn't find the the, uh, the little chapbook size book of it but uh we're gonna be doing more of these as these little cool uh little paperback versions of even the even the shorter stuff i've got because it's easy to do just haven't gotten around to it lately anyway but <sighs> gareth and heatherly they're having their adventure it's going kind of rough going kind of rough gonna say that doesn't sound like uh Having a good time there. Hey, at least they uh, put Ranulf out of his misery now. But uh, the story, of course, is not over. We are about halfway through it. Tune back in next week for more progress in the rest of the story. I hope you like it. I liked reading. I liked writing it. It's been a while since I actually read through it, and uh, you know, if I was writing it now, it would be a little different in some places but still fun story i like it you should like it too you should go buy it and buy all the other books that i have because you like what i do my stories are fun michaelkingswood.com slash store is the best place to go to get it because that gets me the most profit because it's coming straight to my business if you have to go to all the other retailers amazon barnes and noble Kobo, apple ibooks all the other places um you could do that go to michaelkingswood.com slash books to read and uh, you can get links through you know, your universal book link thing to select the store that you want for the title you want and go from there um, in the meantime make sure you go and back the campaign that's starting on this coming Tuesday for the third volume of 52 stories in 2023 right one and two are done Making number three now with your help. I'm making it no matter what, but <clears throat> your help will help it launch and be awesome in, in the uh, sense of uh, starting off with a bang. And you'll get fun stories to read. And your friends will get fun stories to read after you tell them about it, and they can come back to the campaign too. So anyway, Tuesday at noon, that's kicking off. Um, let's make this happen. I will talk to you guys then. And we'll be back next week with more of the Necromancer's Lair. Until then, don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs>